A few days ago, OpenAI released the ChatGPT API to the public. This is significant as this will allow developers to include ChatGPT's technology in their or their clients' applications. So in this video, you'll learn how to include OpenAI's ChatGPT API in your own web application. So in this tutorial, we'll learn how to build our own intelligent chatbot using OpenAI's ChatGPT API. You will learn how to train the model to behave exactly how you want it to. Your chatbot can take on any personality that you want and you can give it some unique personality traits as well. So in this demo, I've created the chatbot called Botty. Botty is curious about the world and loves learning about humans. He's also got a small personality quirk that makes him go beep boop in his responses. As with ChatGPT, we can ask Botty anything. But the difference between Botty and ChatGPT is Botty's unique personality. So we'll start off with a simple question, something like, do you like nature? After sending the message, Botty will take a minute to think about it and then respond. You can see in the response that little personality quirk where he beep boops in the response and Botty is telling us that he loves nature. What's quite cool about ChatGPT's API is that we are able to provide context to the conversation so that Botty can remember certain information during the conversation. As an example, I'll tell Botty that my name is Leon. So the Botty will respond saying, nice to meet you Leon. I can then ask Botty what my name is and Botty will actually remember that details. But we can also ask it advanced questions just like you would have with ChatGPT. Here I'll ask Botty that in JavaScript, how do I write messages to the console? Botty will give us an answer. And what's quite interesting about the response is that it's actually in Markdown language. So in this tutorial, you'll also learn how to format the Markdown language to something that's a bit more presentable. In this example, we can see some highlighting around anything that's considered to be code. So in this video, you'll actually learn quite a lot. I will teach you how to create your own little avatar. You will learn how to use the ChatGPT API in your applications. And you'll also learn how to deploy your application to production. As for the tech stack, we'll use Next.js to develop the front end, as well as the API that's needed for calling the ChatGPT API. As a little bonus, you'll also learn how to use route handlers in Next.js. Route handlers are the API solution that's been introduced since Next.js 13.2. We will also style our application using Tailwind CSS. Right, so let's get started. First, we'll create a new Next.js project. Open up an IDE of your choice. I'll be using VS Code. I'll have a link to VS Code in the description below. After creating a new project in VS Code, open up the integrated terminal. You can do this by clicking on Terminal and New Terminal. In the terminal, we can create a new Next.js project by entering npx create next app at latest, followed by a period. After hitting enter, we'll be asked a few questions. Would you like to use TypeScript? No. Would you like to use ESLint? No. Would you like to use the source directory? No. Would you like to use the experimental app directory? Yes. Import aliases? I'll just press enter. This will now set up our Next.js project. After setup is complete, you'll notice a whole bunch of files appear in the folder. Next, we'll set up Tailwind CSS. For this, we'll just follow the instructions in the documentation. I'll leave a link to Tailwind CSS in the description below. On Tailwind, click on Get Started, then click on Framework Guides, then click on Next.js, and then we can just follow the instructions. Step 1 simply shows us how to create the next project. This is something we've already done. For Step 2, it's telling us to run the following commands in the terminal. So I'll just copy these two lines and then back in VS Code, I'll simply paste in those two commands and press enter. After running the Tailwind installation, we will now see this Tailwind config file in the directory. Let's go back to the instructions. Step 3 is telling us to replace the contents of the Tailwind config file with the content over here. So I'll simply copy all of this and in the Tailwind config file, I'll just delete this and then paste in the new content. Then for step 4, it's telling us to paste the following in the global CSS file. So I'll just copy these three lines. Then back in our project, we can find the global CSS file under app and globals.css. I'll actually go ahead and delete all the stuff that's in there and then replace it with these three lines. Now that we have Next.js set up as well as Tailwind, we can start work on our project. First in the app directory, 
I'll actually go ahead and delete this page.module.css file. We can then open up the page file and delete these imports at the top. I will then remove everything from this first main tag up to the closing main tag. For now, I'll just create a new header with the text Hello World and I'll save this. We can now test out our app by running npm run dev and press enter. In the terminal, you should now see a link to your dev server. For me, it's at localhost 3000 and that seems to be working. To make things easier to see, I'll actually just zoom into this page slightly and I'll place the browser next to the IDE. Now that we have Next.js and Tailwind set up, we're ready to start some real work on the project. Our first step is to create our own API, which we can call to communicate with OpenAI's ChatGPT API. In Next13, we can create our own APIs in the App folder and within the API folder. The sample Next.js app already gives us an API endpoint for Hello, and within the Hello folder, we've got a file called route.css. Within the routes file, we are able to specify all the methods that are available for the service, like get, post, put, delete, etc. In this example, they've provided us with a get function that should return a message for hello next.js. We can test this out by adding the following to the URL, api slash hello. Visiting this route will trigger this file and since we are calling this route within the browser, the get method will be triggered. After running this, we get that message back. Hello, next.js. What we'll do instead is we'll delete this route file, we'll delete the hello folder, and we'll create a new folder called bot. Within the bot folder, we'll now create a new file called route.js. The reason we're creating an API route for this project is because in order for us to communicate with OpenAI's APIs, we need to provide an API key as part of the request. The API key is not something that you'd want to expose on the front end, so therefore running server code is recommended. And these APIs that we define as routes will only run on the server and not in the user's browser. I hope that makes sense. So just to test this out, let's create our own API method. We can do this by exporting a new async function and then providing the verb for the method, like get post, put, delete, etc. This method receives the request object as input and we can return a response by simply returning a new instance of the response class. For now, I'll just add in some text like bot response and I'll save this file. So back in the browser, instead of calling hello, I'll call the bot route instead. And this gives back the response that we hardcoded here, bot response. Realistically for these responses though, we'd want to return an object, maybe something with a response attribute and some content. We could also use this response to return other attributes like error messages, etc. However, if we try to call the endpoint like this, we get an object back, which is not ideal. So what we need to do is JSON stringify this object. We can do this by calling json.stringify and then pass in that object as a parameter. After saving this, and hitting refresh, we can now see the JSON response coming through. We can now integrate the OpenAI API in this route file. So what you need to do first is create your OpenAI account. You can do this by going to openai.com, click on product, click on overview, and then click on get started. You will then be asked to create an account. So you can go ahead and do this. It's free to create an account. After creating your account, you should be presented with this dashboard screen. In the dashboard, you can view example implementations of these OpenAI models. But for our purposes, we simply want to find an API key. You can create an API key by clicking on your profile and then clicking on View API Keys. And on this screen, go ahead and click Create New Secret Key. And you can then copy this key over here. Please ensure to use your own key as I will be deleting this key after this tutorial. After copying the API key, we need to paste it somewhere in our project. This API key needs to be kept secret and not be exposed to your users. In order to do this, we'll create a new environment variable file by creating a new file in the root directory and calling it .env.local. We can then give our variable a name. I'll call it OpenAI API key and we'll assign it the value of that API key. We can then save this file. 
In order for the environment variables to be made available to the project, we need to restart the dev server. So in the terminal, I will press Ctrl C and Y. Before we start up the development server again, we do need to install one more dependency. We will install a package called OpenAI by running npm i openai. After that's installed, we can start up the development server again by running npm run dev. So back in our route file, we need to import a few dependencies from the OpenAI package. So at the top of the file, we will import something from OpenAI and what we'll import is configuration as well as the OpenAI API. Then, in our get function, we will create a new configuration object, which instantiates the configuration class. And the configuration class takes in a few options. And the only option we care about is the API key. Because the API key is stored in an environment variable, we can access it by typing process.env.openai underscore API underscore key. This is the same name we gave the variable in the environment variable file. We can now instantiate an OpenAI object by calling new OpenAI API and then passing it the configuration object. We can now use the OpenAI object to call any of the many functions exposed by OpenAI. This object can be used to create images using DALI 2. It can create completions from any of the available models like DaVinci. But for ChatGPT, they've now exposed this function called create chat completion. This is what we'll be using. This function takes in an object and the first attribute is the model that we'll be using. For ChatGPT, OpenAI released the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. Besides for the model, we also have to specify the messages. This is an array of message prompts. Typically, this is the two sides of a conversation. This includes messages from the user as well as responses from the AI. Each item in the array needs to be an object. And this object has two attributes. The first is the role, which can either be assistant, user or system. And the second is the content of the message. As an example, if we had to send the message to the AI, our role would be the user. The content would be the message that we sent to the AI, something like hello there. If we wanted to simulate a response from the AI, for instance, to train the AI, we could provide another role, but this time we will select assistant as the role. Assistant represents the AI, and we could also specify the content of this message. So in this case, we're pretending the AI responded with I am doing well, thank you. Feeding this information into the completion function will also help to train the AI in how we expect it to respond. However, there is a very interesting role available as well. And typically you would start a conversation off with this role. What I'm referring to is the system role. The system role is neither the AI or ourselves. See this as an internal role which can be used to train the AI into behaving a certain way. For the system role, we could instruct the AI to behave in a certain way or to role play as a certain person. As an example, I'll just give a simple instruction like you are a customer support assistant. Let's actually add another message from the user and we'll just write a simple message here. I'll just ask it the question like, are you able to assist me? So when we call this function, the AI will process these messages in sequence. First, it will receive the instruction from the system role. Then it will receive a message from ourselves. At this point, we've now told it how to respond to a question like that. And finally, we're asking it a question. The AI will now respond to this question. This function returns a promise. So what we'll do is we'll await the response and we'll assign the response to a variable. Lastly, we want to take the response that we receive from the AI and that is what we want to return in our service response. So I will therefore replace hello I'm a bot with the response.data.choices and we'll just grab the first result in the array. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'll just refresh this page. After refreshing, we can see a few cool things coming through. We are receiving a message. What we're getting back is the role, which says assistant. So this is coming from the AI. And we are also receiving the content. In this case, the AI responded with, yes, I'm here to assist you with any customer support needs or questions you may have. What can I assist you with today? Fantastic. So let's stop with the route for now. We'll revisit this soon. I would now like to move on to creating this user interface. If you want to use the same avatar that I did, you can find it in the GitHub repo linked below. But if you wanted to create your own avatar, you can do that using Midjourney. For this, you can visit midjourney.com and then click on Join Beta. 
This will then ask you to join the Mid Journey Discord chat. You can just click on Accept Invite. After joining the Mid Journey Discord chat, you can simply open up one of these newbies rooms and you can then generate an image by entering a prompt. So in the message field, type in forward slash imagine and you can then describe any avatar that you want. So I managed to eventually get a nice result using a prompt like this. So after a couple of attempts, I managed to generate this image. And I was then able to remove the background using the Adobe Express web tool. Once you've downloaded your avatar without the background, you need to then drop the image of the avatar in the public folder. And let's start working on this site. First, let's create a section that contains body as well as his chat bubble. So back in the page file, let's remove the heading and let's add an opening and closing main tag. Let's give the main tag a few styles by adding class name. I'll add container, margin left and right of auto, and the maximum width of 4XL. I will then create a div that contains the chat bubble, and I'll create a heading that says body says. We'll give this heading a few classes, like text to XL. We'll make that text white and bold. Below the heading, I'll create a new paragraph that contains Botty's chat. And for now, I'll just add some text like Botty is thinking. And I'll add some styles like text white. We want this chat bubble to have a blue background. So in the outer div, I'll add a few styles. We'll add a background blue of 400. I'll add some padding top and bottom of 4. And I'll add some padding left and right of 4 as well. Let's create another div that contains the image of Botty. So within this div, We'll add an image component with the source of slash bot.png. By adding slash anything, we'll simply refer to images in the public folder. We need to import this image object from next. At the top of this code, we'll import image from next slash image. Image expects a few properties, so we'll specify a width of 512 as well as a height of 512. You can get these exact values by looking at the properties of the image that you generated. But these values should work for you as well. We do want the chat block and body to show up next to each other. So I'll wrap these items in a new div. I will give this div a few styles. I'll align the items grid and grid columns too. This should place these two items next to each other. We also want to center the text in this block. You can do this by adding a few styles to this div. I'll add flex. Flex-call for vertical alignment and justify center to move everything to the center of the container. Next, we also want to add this little arrow part to the chat block. For this, we'll add a new item just above the header. We'll create a div. We'll then give this div a few styles. First, we need to position this div absolute, which means we need to give the wrapping class a position of relative. We can give it a height of 15 pixels, a width of 15 pixels. We'll give it a background color of blue for 100. I'll move it to the right of the container by using minus right 7 pixels. And we'll also specify a top position of 50%. After saving this, we can see this new little div square showing up over here. We also want to rotate this slightly by adding rotate and 45 degrees. We can now see that little chat arrow over here. The next section we want to add is our prompt form. So next we'll create a form just above the closing main tag and we'll add an on submit event to this form. For this I'll add a new function called handle submit. We can then go ahead and create this function. We can add this function within the home component and just above the return statement. Let's go ahead and create this function by saying const handle submit. This function will receive the event and in order to avoid refreshing the page when submitting the form we'll add the event dot prevent default function. We can now add our fields to the form. First I'll add a label and I'll give it some text like say something. I'll also style this label. After saving this file, we'll get this error message. This is because all Next.js components are considered server-side components by default. So in order to solve this error, we need to add the following to the top of our page. Use client. After saving that, we can now see that the text is pulling through. Below the label, we'll now add an input field. We will set this to required and the type of text. And we'll add some placeholder text like ask a question or say something nice. After saving this, we can see that the label and the input field is showing up next to each other. We do want them to be aligned vertically. So to do this, I'll wrap these 
components in a new div. I will then add a few styles to this wrapping div, like flex, flex column for vertical alignment, and we'll add a space between these two items with a gap of four. Let's also style this input element by adding class name. We'll add padding left and right of four, padding top and bottom of two, a text gray of 700, a placeholder color of gray 500, a background color of white. We'll also create a border with a border color of gray 700, and we'll round the edges with rounded large. You can now see the input field pulling through. Let's now also add a button. We can do that by adding a button just below this wrapping div. We'll give this button some text like send and I'll add a little icon like this rocket ship. You can add icons by pressing the windows key and period. We'll give this button a few styles. We'll give it padding left and right of four. We'll give it vertical padding of two. We'll create some spacing between the button and the input form with margin top of two. We'll add a text gray of 700, a background gray of 100. We'll add a border with a border color of gray 700. We'll round the edges with rounded large and we'll add a hover state to scale the button up slightly when hovered over. After saving this, we can see the button showing up and when we hover over it, we do see it scale. We want this scaling to be smooth, so we'll add some animations to this. So on the button, we'll add a few more styles. We'll add a transition all and an animation duration of 200. You can now see it grow smoothly. On the button, we also want to assign a type and the type will be submit. I also want to create some space between the form and bodies section. So for this, I'll add some styles on the form and I'll add a margin top of six great the next section we want to create is this chat history that we see over here so below the form we'll add another div i'll add some styles to this div for now we just want to create some spacing between the history and the form so we can add a margin top of six in this div we'll be looping through the chat history but since we don't have any data yet we'll just come back to this div later so what we want to do now is once we submit this form we want to send this message to ChatGPT's api so we'll add that logic in our handle submit function. The handle submit function needs a reference to the values in this input field. So in next what we can do is create a use ref state and assign that to this field. So at the top of the file below the use client we can import use ref from react. Then within the home component we can create a new variable called message ref and we can make that equal to use ref. Then in the input field we can add another property called ref and assign message ref to this. We can now access the value of that field by creating a new variable like prompt and then saying that prompt is equals to message ref dot current dot value. We can test this out by writing prompt to the console. So back in our page, we can open up the developer tools and then clicking on console. I'll just type in something like test message and then click send. And we can see our message coming up in the console. So what we need to do is if we go back to our route file, we can see that when we call the create chat completion function, we actually pass the entire chat history to the AI. That will also ensure that the AI remembers context like my name and other information. So the way we can see this working is when we call the function, we will first pass in the system message to prime the AI. This will remain intact within the route file. However, the list of chats or the conversation needs to be dynamic. So we'll have to keep track of the past messages and we'll use state for that. And then each time a new message is added, for instance, a message that we send or a response from the AI will be added to this list dynamically. So back in the page file, we'll create a new state to store our message history. In order to create state, we'll import use state from React. Then below message ref, we'll create a new const. We will call it messages. And use state also provides us with a function to set the messages. And we'll then call use state. And initially the value will be a blank array. I would also like to store the response from body in another use state. So whenever we receive a new message from Barty, the text in this chat window will automatically update. For this, I'll create a new const. I will call this display message. I will call the setter function set display message is equal to use state. And I'll assign the initial value as hi there. We can now replace this hard-coded text with this display message. So we'll take body is thinking and replace it with display message instead. And we can see that reflected on the page. There is one more state that I'd like to add and that is a loading state. So when we send a message to the AI, in the time that it takes for OpenAI to get back to us, we want to 
set the loading state to true and display a text here that says body is thinking for the duration of the loading phase. So I'll create another state. I will call this loading with the setter function of set loading. This will use use state and initially the state will be false. We can now make the response from body a bit more dynamic by saying that if loading is true, then we want to display some text like body is thinking else. If loading is false, then we'll just display the message. You can test this out by changing the state to true. And now we can see the text showing up saying body is thinking. There is one more detail that I'd like to add to the chat block. So while body is thinking, in other words, while the loading state is true, we want this bubble to have a bit of a pulsing effect to it. So in the div that represents the chat bubble. I'll add in some JavaScript code. So we need to just remove this comment and replace it with this back tick. So we'll add it to the front and the back. We also then need to wrap this in curly braces. So I'll add that at the front as well as at the back. Now we can add some dynamic JavaScript code to this by adding a dollar sign and curly braces. And we can then say that if loading is true, then we want to add this built-in animation of pulse. Else, if loading is not true, we'll just return no styling. We can now see that because loading is true, the entire bubble is pulsing. And if I set loading to false, the animation stops. Right, so back in our handle submit function, when we submit the message, the first thing we want to do is set loading to true. Then we want to build up our chat history. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create a new variable called new message list, which is an array. New message list will then spread all of the existing messages. So it's the existing message history. And we will then add our new prompt to this history list by creating an object. And for this object, we'll create a role of user, since this is taking in our prompt as input. And content will be equal to our prompt. Now that we have this new message list, which includes the previous conversation history, as well as the latest prompt from the user, we can now call our route API. At the moment, the route API is set to a get method. Because we're passing form data to this method, it needs to be changed to post. So back in our page file, we can now call our API by calling the fetch method and then passing in the API endpoint with front slash API and bot. The fetch API requires more attributes. So our second parameter will be an object. In this object, we'll specify the method as being post. We need to assign headers to this request and in headers, we'll set the content type equals to application slash json. Lastly, we need to specify the body of the request. The body will take in this new message list as its input. This object needs to be stringified, so we'll call json.stringify. And within json stringify, we'll pass in our object. This object will have a parameter called messages. And for messages, we will pass in the new message list as input. This now means that we are calling our custom API and then passing it the entire message history as input. The fetch function returns a promise, which we need to await. In order for await to work, we need to convert our handle submit function to an async function. After our custom API has completed, we will return the response from the AI in the response attribute. So therefore, after calling fetch, we need to assign the response to a variable as well. Since it's possible for the route to return an exception, we need to handle any errors that it might throw. We can do this by wrapping the fetch logic in a try-catch block. If we receive any errors, I'll simply write them to the console by calling console.logerror.message. If we do receive a response, we want to check if the response.ok is not false. If it is, we can write some message to the console, but for now, I'll just return out of this function. We can now grab the data from the response by creating a new variable called data, and then on the response, we can call .json. This will convert our stringified response in the route file over here back to a JavaScript object. The JSON method returns a promise, which we need to await. Right, so the data object will now give us the response from the chatbot. This response will include both the role, which should be assistant as it's coming from the chatbot, as well as the content, which is the response that we get back from the chatbot. The data object will now give us access to the role as well as the content of the message coming back from the chatbot. So we can now update our new message list to include this new response from the chatbot as well. So now we can update a new message list by adding the response from the chatbot to this list. So on new message list, I'll call the push function and I'll append the new object to this list. 
This object will contain the role, which we can get from data, response, role. We can also set the content equal to data.response.content. New message list should now contain all the conversation history up until now, as well as the prompt that we just sent to the AI. And lastly, we've added the response from the AI bot to this list as well. Now that we have this new message list array, we can set the messages state by calling set messages and then passing in the new message list variable. This means that messages now have an updated view of the conversation, but we also want to take the response from body and display it in his chat bubble. To do this, we'll call the set display message function and then pass in the data.response.content value. What I also want to do is after we've processed this message, we want to clear out the text that's in this input field. To do this, we can call message ref dot current dot value and we'll set it equal to an empty string also once all of this processing has completed we want to set the loading state back to false so after catch i'll also include this finally block and within finally i'll call set loading and i'll set it to false this means that whether we get a response from the api or we receive an exception we will always set loading to false we now need to make a few changes to the api route when we call the api we are sending the message list in the body tag we now need to receive this list of messages in the api route so within the route file i'll add the following line of code i'll create a variable that destructures messages from the request object because the request object is a stringified value we need to pass that back to a javascript object so on request i will call the json function because the json function returns a promise i'll await the result now we have a view of all the messages in the conversation so now we'll make a change to this message array We'll leave the very first item intact, which is the priming instruction from the system, but we'll remove the rest of these objects and instead we'll add the list of messages by spreading the messages variable. We should be able to test this out in the console. So I'll open up the developer tools and I'll open up console. You might have noticed that we are getting an error message on the image component saying that the alt property is required. So let's scroll down to our image component and let's add in that alt component. I'll simply give it a name like body. After refreshing the page, that error message has been resolved. The first thing I would like to test, we can test this out by writing data to the console. So back in our application, let's try this out. I'll write a message like who are you and I'll click send. We can see the response object coming back within the data object. Within the response, we have an attribute called message, where clearly we are receiving a response from the API as well as the role. That means that this logic needs to change slightly. Instead of just looking at response, we also need to draw one level lower to look at message.role as well as message.content. I would also like to have a look at the value of new message list. So let's write that to the console as well. I'm going to refresh the app. I'll ask the question again, who are you? And we can now see our messages reflected in the console. For the very first message, we can see our prompt under the role user, as well as the content, who are you? The second entry in the array is the response from the AI. Or let's write a comment. I will say, my name is Leon and click send. After receiving a response, we can see we now have an object with four entries. The first being the question from the user, the second item being the response. Then we can see our message, my name is Leon, as well as the response from the assistant. Hi Leon, how can I help you today? So we can now see the state being updated with the chat history. And we can also see that the AI is indeed receiving the context like my name and responding with an appropriate answer. I will now remove these console logs. We can see that the chat window is missing that response from body. And that is because where we set display message, we just need to add message to this structure. Let's try this out by entering my name is Leon and clicking send. We can see the loading state working as well as this thing is pulsing. After sending the message, the loading state was set to false and the bubble stopped flashing. We can also see the response from body and our input field has been cleared. We can now work on writing out the chat history by going down to this div. Within this div, we'll create some curly brackets. In this code, we'll map through messages. Map will call a function, which takes in a single message as input. And we can now return something to write back to the screen. In React, when mapping through a list, 
we need to provide a key prop at the highest level element. So I'll add key. I'll set the key equal to message.content. For this div, I'll add a few styles as well. So in class name, I'll add flex, items center with a gap of four and padding top and bottom of two. Within this div, I'll add another div with a few styles. This specific div will represent this little avatar icon. So we'll give it some space. We'll set a width of 10% of the container. I'll set it to flex as well as items center. Then based on whether this message is from the bot or ourselves, I either want to show the bot's icon or the text you. So I'll add this little condition that says if message.role equals assistant, which means it's from the bot, then we will write out a div with the following styles. A width of 50 pixels, a height of 50 pixels. We want to round the image by providing a rounded or full. And I'll add an overflow of hidden to prevent the image from overflowing outside of the div. Within this div, I'll then add an image tag and I'll link this to the bot PNG image. I'll give this image a few class names as well. We'll provide a width of full, a height of full, and an object cover to ensure that the image takes up the full width and height of the div. Then, if the role is not assistant, then we'll simply write out another div. We'll give this a few styles. I'll set the text to extra large and a font of bold. Within the div, I'll just write the text U. We can now see the two entries showing up. So let's also add the text. So below this div, we'll add another div. So below this image div, we'll add another div. And within this div, we'll write out message.content. We can now see those two messages showing up. Let's just style these containers a bit. So I'll add a few styles to this div. I'll set the background gray of 100, a padding top and bottom of two, padding left and right of four. I'll set the border and the border color of gray 400. And I'll round the corners with rounded XL. That's looking good. So let's try to add another message to this. I'll tell it that my dog's name is Ruby and I'll send the message. We can see the loading state kicking in. And after that, we can see the response coming back from the bot and we can see our messages in the chat history. The responses from Botty is very plain at the moment and it's very stock standard chat GPT behavior. So what we can do is go back to our route file and we can now change the message in the system role to really tell the bot to behave in a very specific way. As an example, you can tell this bot to behave like Elon Musk, Donald Trump, or any celebrity that you can imagine. You can also ask it to roleplay as any fictional character as well. So what I'm going to do is remove this text and replace it with something else. So for this demo, I came up with this prompt. You are a friendly little robot. Your name is Botty. You are helpful and kind. You have a little quirk where you go beep boop in between certain sentences. You love nature and earth. You have a great sense of humor you find humans fascinating. After feeding at this prompt, we can try to ask the questions again. I'll ask Botty, do you like dogs? And send the message. Instantly, you can see a very big difference in the response. You can see that personality quirk where it goes beep boop. It's also a lot more playful and fun in its response. We can also ask Botty more complicated questions. As an example, we can ask it a coding challenge, like in JavaScript, how can I write messages to the console? And Botty will then give a response. What is quite interesting, if you look at the response, it's actually using markdown language to format its response. That's what these three little back ticks are. They represent code. So to make this look better, we'll convert this response from markdown to something that's a bit more readable. So to do this, we need to install two more packages. We can stop our development server by pressing Ctrl C and Y. We can then install the following two packages by running npm install html react parser as well as marked and I'll press enter. After installing html react parser and marked, we can start up the development server again and we can go back to our page file. At the top of our page file, we want to import marked from the marked package as well as parse from the html react parser package. We can then make the following change. So at the point where we write out the display message in the chat bubble, we can wrap display message in the marked function 
So after doing this, we'll see that the message is being converted to HTML, but obviously we don't want to display the tags as a string. We want to convert this into HTML as well. So for this, we'll call the parse function and then pass in the marked display message into that. We'll ask it again how to write messages to the console. And you'll notice that the output looks much better now. Also, if we have a look at the developer tools, specifically the HTML elements, we can see that the code is actually added to a code HTML element. So if we wanted to take it one step further, we could add styling for the code HTML element specifically. To show you an example of this, we can go back to our globals.css file and we can add styles to the base layer. In this case, we'll add some styles to the code element by calling apply followed by tailwind CSS classes. So I'll ask Bati again. In JavaScript, how can I write messages to the console? And you can now see that styling reflected over here. Right, so we now have a functioning AI chatbot built using ChatGPT. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to deploy your application to production. Basically, there are two parts involved to this. First is we need to deploy our application to GitHub. So if you haven't already, I recommend signing up for an account at github.com and then coming back to the IDE. From here, we can click on the source control icon on the left hand side and we can then enter a message, something like initial deployment and then create the commit. This also means that you need to have Git installed as well. I'll have a link to both GitHub and Git in the description below. If this was successful, you can now publish the branch to GitHub by clicking on publish branch and you will then be asked to create either a private or public repository. This is completely up to you. I'll make this public. The VS Code will now deploy this project to GitHub. Once it's completed successfully, you should get a message like this saying the project has been published to this repository. Lastly, we will then deploy this project to Vercel. I'll leave the link in the description as well. But head over to Vercel.com and create your free account. After logging in, click on Add New project and from here you'll be able to link your Vercel account to your github account after doing that you will notice the chatbot showing up in the list of repositories now we can simply click on import so now we can give the project a name i'll just leave it as chatbot we can also set environment variables which we need to do in our project under the env.local file we have one environment variable called openai api key so i'll copy that over to the environment variables and I will also copy over the value of that key and click add. Lastly, we can now click on deploy. The deployment will take a few minutes to complete. After the deployment is complete, you'll see a screen like this with the confetti. You can now visit our application by clicking on continue to dashboard and we can then click on visit. So now your site is live and available to the public. You can also assign a custom domain name using Vercel. Let's give this a spin. I'll ask Bati, how are you? After sending the message, we can see Bati thinking and eventually Bati comes back with a response. I'll also tell Bati what my name is and Bati sends me a friendly message back. I'll then also ask Bati what my name is and it was able to retain that information. So before we end this video, there is one more piece of advice that I need to give. When I built this project initially, I was getting all sorts of error messages after deploying to Vercel. When I submitted the message to the bot, it was just thinking indefinitely and in the console I noticed error messages related to course error messages. So if you run into that same issue, you can try the following to resolve that error message. This worked for me. In this file, next.config.js, you can add a new attribute to this next config. I will just paste the values here. You're welcome to freeze the video and just copy this text. So we pass it this async headers function, which returns the stuff here. I managed to find this code on the Vercel website in their documentation as well. So after adding this content, you can simply save the file, go back to your source control tab and add a comment like add course headers and you can then click on commit and click on sync changes. VS Code will now push these changes to the GitHub repo, which will automatically trigger a deployment on Vercel. After that, you should see the course errors being resolved. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more content on OpenAI or any of its APIs or AI and chatbots in general, please leave a comment. I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you very much for following along. I hope you can see the value in this ChatGPT API and I would love to see your projects and how you end up using this API. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.